Good morning and welcome to Midday with Gray. Midday with Gray is part of our continued outreach ministries here at St. George's, the Anglican Parish in the Blue Mountains. Thank you for joining with me on this July the 24th for a service of prayer for the day of Friday. Let's take a moment of silence uh, to uh, reflect uh, and ground ourselves as we come together in a time of uh, scripture readings, prayers for ourselves, and inspiration for our service in the community. Uh, behind me, you see a little snapshot of the natural beauty uh, that surrounds us on the property here at St. George's in the town, uh, the village of Clarksburg. And so I hope you can enjoy the background uh, as we enter into this time of worship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Make me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. And now for a hymn of praise. Jesus, Savior of the world, come to us in your mercy. We look to you to save us and help us. By your cross and your life laid down, you set your people free, and we look to you to save and help us. When they were ready to perish, you saved your disciples. We look to you to come to our help. In the greatness of your mercy, loose us from our chains, forgive the sins of all of your people, make yourself known as our Savior and mighty Deliverer, Save us and help us that we may praise you. Come now and dwell with us, Lord Jesus Christ. Hear our prayer and be with us always. And when you come in your glory, make us to be one with you and to share in the life of your kingdom. Amen. And now for the word of God. Uh, our first reading today uh, comes from the Psalms, and it's Psalm 40, and you're invited to follow along in your own copy of the Bible, or if you have a copy of the Book of Alternative Services, you can turn to page 755. Again, that is Psalm 40. The Psalmist writes, I waited patiently upon the Lord. He stooped to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the desolate pit out of the mire and the clay. He set my feet upon a high cliff and made my, shooting, my footing sure. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many shall see and stand in awe and put their trust in the Lord. Happy are they who trust in the Lord. They do not resort to evil spirits or turn to false gods. Great things are they that you have done, O Lord my God. How great your wonders and your plans for us. There is none who can be compared with you. Oh, that I could make them known and tell them, but they are more than I can count. In sacrifice and offering you take no pleasure. You have given me ears to hear you. Burnt offering and sin offering are no longer required. And so I said, behold, I come. In the roll of the book, it is written concerning me. I love to do your will, O my God. Your law is deep in my heart. I proclaimed righteousness in the great congregation. Behold, I did not restrain my lips. And that, O Lord, you know. Your righteousness have I not hidden in my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and your deliverance. I have not concealed your love and faithfulness from the great congregation. You are the Lord. Do not withhold your compassion from me. Let your love and your faithfulness keep me safe forever. For innumerable troubles have crowded upon me. My sins have overtaken me and I cannot see. They are more in number than the hairs of my head and my heart fails me. Be pleased, O Lord, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let them be ashamed and altogether dismayed who seek after my life to destroy it. Let them draw back and be disgraced who take pleasure in my misfortune. Let those who say, Aha! 
and gloat over me, be confounded, because they are ashamed. Let all who seek you rejoice and be glad. Let those who love your salvation continually say, Great is the Lord. Though I am poor and afflicted, the Lord will have regard for me. You are my helper and my deliverer. Do not tarry, O oh my God. The Lord be with you. Let us offer up this prayer at the end of this psalm. God, our Savior, hear our prayer for all those who suffer at the hands of others, and especially those who suffer for the sake of justice. Raise and comfort them, and lead us all in the paths of loving service. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. The next reading that I have to share with you today comes from St. Paul's letter to the church in Rome, chapter 15, verses 14 to 24. Uh, and its uh, heading title is Paul's Reason for Writing So Boldly. And St. Paul writes this, I myself feel confident about you, my brothers and sisters, that you yourselves are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge, and able to instruct one another. Nevertheless, on some points I've written to you rather boldly, by way of reminder, because of the grace given to me by God to be a minister of Christ Jesus to the Gentiles, and in the priestly service of the gospel of God, so that the offering of the Gentiles may be acceptable, sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In Christ Jesus, then, I have reason to boast of my work for God, for I will not venture to speak of anything except what Christ has accomplished through me, through the power of signs and wonders, by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and as far around as Illyricum, I have fully proclaimed the good news of Christ. Thus I make it my ambition to proclaim the good news, not where Christ has already been named, so that I do not build on someone else's foundation, but as it has been written, those who have never been told of him shall see, and those who have never heard of him shall understand. This is the reason, writes Paul, that I have been so hindered from coming to visit you. But now, with no further place for me in these regions, I desire, as I have for many years, to come and visit with you when I go to Spain. For I do hope to see you on my journey and to be sent on by you once I've enjoyed your company for a little while. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Sometimes uh, when I'm reading St. Paul's letters, I try to uh, situate myself in the context of what life and ministry would have been like as he wrote to some of the earliest Christian communities. Where today Anglican churches have a, a defined presence in most communities, because we're marked by our church architecture and our gathering places, uh, St. Paul was trying to tell the gospel story in a context where there were no established forms of Christianity in existence. What was it like to proclaim the gospel of Jesus in places where it had never been heard before. Now that would take a great deal of courage, wouldn't it? Without the resources that our churches today are blessed with, St. Paul found himself having to go wherever people were willing to listen to him preach. And those journeys took him to marketplaces, to synagogues, in private homes, and wherever community was gathering together. Paul was able to risk so much for the sake of the gospel because he believed that what he was sharing was transformational news to all who heard it. The people of his day needed to hear about our God who loved them and sought to bring justice for them. A God who accomplished miraculous feats among those who were ordinary, those who were often overlooked or neglected by others. Now, Paul understood that the work of proclaiming the gospel of Jesus was like a priest ministering in the temple. But instead of offering up animals of sacrifice, Paul believed he was offering up the gifts of faith and obedience from those who were being drawn into the message and the salvation of the gospel. These gifts were being sanctified by the Holy Spirit 
as Paul continued to draw more people, many of whom were Gentiles, into the holiness of God's sacrifice given through Jesus Christ. Now, St. Paul also realized that there were some followers of Jesus in the Roman community already, many of whom were Jewish. And while he saw himself as the founder of some Christian church communities, he also had to work with some previously existing ones, like the church in Rome. Paul had these great plans to, to go out and plant a new church in Spain, but he recognized in order to be able to do that, he would need the support of already existing church communities. So Paul's letter to the Romans was his way of reaching out to Christians in Rome to introduce himself. Now, partnerships are always an important component to mission, and I think that this continues to be the case today. While today's context is very different than the pagan world of St. Paul's time, I think that the need to be bold in sharing the gospel in places that we are unfamiliar with is still vitally important. Do we consider the gifts of talking about our faith to others as an offering offered up to God in terms of our own faith and obedience today? But the temple that we, you and I, are called to minister in might be the temple of our own community, or the temple of our backyard, or the temple of our relationships that we find ourselves surrounded by. And the entire purpose of sharing our faith is to know that it is a gift and an invitation to others to be drawn into the holiness and the love of God that only God can provide. And so today we say thank you to St. Paul for his letters written many years ago but preserved within our sacred texts. Thank you, Paul, for giving us something to reflect on today. This we pray in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus said, I'm the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Let us enter into a time of prayer for ourselves, our families, our communities, and those we are called to serve. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray for all God's children throughout the world, for ourselves as we pause for worship in this moment, for our families and all those we love, for Todd, our bishop, and all those who are called to serve and lead in our church. Lastly, let us remember the vulnerable in our communities. Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. Let us pray for peace and goodwill among all nations, and for the care, the dignity, and the well-being of all people. Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the poor, for all those who are sick at this time. Let us pray for the hungry, the oppressed, for all in isolation from community. Let us pray for all those in any need or trouble. Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. Let us remember the Christian church in all of its expressions and denominations for the ways that we are called to bring God's hope and love to others and to never stop proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. Lastly, let us remember those who have died in the peace of Christ and for those whose faith is known to God alone. Lord, in your love, hear our prayer. Let us give God thanks for all of our blessings and for God's never-ceasing presence in our lives, now and always. Amen. Lord Jesus, we thank you for all of the benefits that you have won for us, for all of the pains and the insults that you have borne for us. Most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may we know you more clearly love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. Gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray as our Savior taught us, and together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth 
as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And may Christ our Savior grant us his peace. This draws our time of prayer to a close. Thank you for joining with me today. Feel free to subscribe if you aren't already a subscriber to our YouTube channel, The Anglican Parish of the Blue Mountains. Blessings in your day. See you next time. Bye.